welcome back to another video. So today we're starting with what is social dominance orientation before moving on to look at how prejudice forms and the different types of prejudice that exist. So Prato, Sedanius, Stilworth and Marley in 1984 examined the social dominance theory. They defined it as the hierarchical social order that is maintained through individual and institutional discrimination. There are individual differences in desire for hierarchical versus equal group relations in society. There is a scale, or the SDO scale, as it's commonly known, which measures support for group-based dominance and intergroup inequality. People differ in the extent to which they endorse these attitudes, beliefs and ideologies. Justifying group inequality and the oppression of some group by others can be seen as legitimising myths. Examples of hierarchy enhancing and legitimising myths can be seen within prejudice types. So this would include racism and sexism, for example, and also the ideology of meritocracy. So Prato et al. in 1984, and then also Sedanius and Prato in 1999, developed the SDO scale. This was broken into two components, dominance and egalitarianism. So an example item that would be on the scale for dominance would be some groups of people are just more worthy than others, and an example item of what would be on the egalitarianism scale would be it would be good if all groups could be equal. So what does the SDO or social dominance orientation show us? Extensive evidence shows that SDO is related to prejudice towards a wide range of social groups. These include sexism, racism and anti-immigration prejudice. There is often opposition to progressive and social policies and this is seen through affirmative action policies. And there is also support for military spending and military force. We covered previously in another video the RWA, which is the right-wing authoritarianism. I'll drop a link in the description down below um, if you want to learn more about that. But both the SDO and the RWA are positively interrelated, but are too weakly correlated to suggest that both variables represent the same construct. The SDO is only weakly related to authoritarian submission. Social dominators do not necessarily value conventions and traditions, only if these preserve hierarchical societal structures. Let's now move on to look at how SDO and RWA influence ideology and prejudice. It is believed within psychology that RWA and SDO both predict a range of criterion variables related to political and intergroup issues, the two variables account for a different aspect in outgroup prejudice. So adherence to social norms can be linked to right-wing association, whereas preference for inequality can be linked to social dominance orientation. Both RWA and SDO are complementary predictors of ethnocentrism and outgroup prejudice. The two together produce a correlation considerably higher than either alone. Both were introduced as personality constructs, but research suggests that both constructs are influenced by contextual factors and are predicted by core personality traits. Interestingly, different contextual factors and personality traits can predict RWA and SDO, and this is known as the dual process model, which was created by Duckett in 2001 and Duckett et al. in 2002. So let's now break down this dual process model. RWA and SDO represent two independent dimensions of social attitudes expressing different motivational goals. The RWA has a motivational goal to establish and maintain societal control, stability and cohesion, whilst the SDO has a motivational goal of asserting power and group dominance. So as you can see in the visual here, this is the dual process model from Duckett 2001 and Duckett et al 2002. And it breaks down how there is a difference between right wing authoritarianism and social dominance orientation in terms of how they are created. However, they both link towards that end box, which is prejudice towards threatening and low status outgroups. So if we start with the right wing authoritarianism, this starts from firstly a threatening context and then also having a personality within the individual that leans towards social conformity. These two in combination lead to a dangerous worldview which leads into the right-wing authoritarianism, which then links back to prejudice. Whereas if we now look at the social dominance orientation, this is created through competitive context and also a personality of being tough-minded. 
and this leads to a competitive jungle worldview, which then leads into social dominance orientation and again back to prejudice. So what are the effects of dangerous and competitive worldviews on right-wing authoritarianism and social dominance orientation and how are these affected over a period of time? So Sibley, Wilson and Duckett did some research into this to try and determine what would happen over time. They examined this over a five-month period and analysis indicated that the motivational goal for group-based dominance and superiority indexed by SDO changed as a function of the degree to which the social world was perceived as a competitive place characterised by inequality and resource scarcity. Whereas the RWA, in contrast, changed as a function of the degree to which the social world was perceived as a dangerous and threatening place, prone to high levels of crime and immoral behaviour. These findings do tie into the dual process model that we've just outlined above and are consistent with the cognitive processes that Duckett's 2001 model predicts are underlying prejudice. I hope you found this video useful and I hopefully see you again soon with another one. Thanks, bye!